Okay, here's a video that's going to go down in the all-time annals of self-indulgence for somewhat pointless videos. This is Washington, D.C. at dusk. And a, the, the final, perhaps final snow of the season is coming down. And uh, this is what snow looks like in the city at night. This may last for 10 minutes because I'm walking home. This is a building that the Scientology Church bought in the earlier mid-80s. It's quite grand, although it used to be sort of unrenovated inside. I went to a party there once before they bought it. This is DuPont Circle, kind of one of the main intersections of DuPont Circle. This is Connecticut Avenue. Many people are run over when they do what I'm doing, which is to cross the street. Things emerge from under the circle and get them. Nothing got me this time. This is the block where Reason Magazine has its offices. This is one of the three Starbucks that are in DuPont Circle. One's on the circle. This is north of the circle. And there's one that's block south. This is the street where there was a building. I think that one of these two white ones was for sale last year for something like 990000 And the Libertarian Party National Committee could have bought it and put their office there, but instead they bought something for 800000 way in Virginia. This is Teaism, which is a local, slightly snooty countercultural chain that features, features Asianish food. This is the home of a Ron Paul donor, <laughs> one of the few who owns a nice home in DC. I haven't been inside it, I'm just imagining from the outside that it would be nice. turret, the curved wall, is a home for sale that belongs to someone who I am told has been accused of international crimes, but only accused. Crimes that involve things like human trafficking. This is a very fancy area, kind of between DuPont and Calorama. The Phillips Collection is up ahead. It's a private art collection. Most of these are houses. A few have been converted into simple condo buildings. statuary around here. I just had three beers and some appetizers, which may explain why I'm making a video of walking in the snow. That's the Phillips Collection with a little bird symbol. It's a private art collection. It's close to free to go to. And it never closes down, even when the President and Congress get at each other's throats. So, if you come to D.C. and they've closed the Smithsonian and all that kind of thing because they're fighting with each other and there's a government shutdown, you can come here to the Phillips Collection and probably pay a dollar or two and get in and see some art.
some embassy, I'm sure, as many things are. Perhaps we'll go just close enough to see what it is. It's Morocco. Egypt is also near here. I think this would have been prettier if I'd done it just slightly earlier and had more light. But I stopped to buy groceries because I thought I may need some chicken and some soup and some milk and some butter and some jelly and things in case I am trapped inside tomorrow. Since they're predicting five to six inches in the next 12 hours. This is an area that's basically the southern tip of Embassy Row. So all the buildings here are embassies like this, which I think is Thailand or Indonesia or something. I think it's Malaysia though. A DC bus kind of speeding. It seems to be the old major boulevards in DC. Named after New England states. And Massachusetts and Connecticut are all fairly major, although so is Wisconsin. And Virginia is not as major, but it does have some expensive real estate and big government dealings on it. Here's the uh, Indonesian embassy again, kind of the entryway. It's behind a big fence. Some tourist family without hats in the snow. There's a camera watching us as we walk past the Indonesian embassy. This is Dupont Circle, which used to be kind of the gay neighborhood, although. And apparently long before that in the 70s, and maybe extremely early 80s, but mainly the 70s, it used to be a kind of hippie hate ashberry pot haze neighborhood. Where all these things were just group houses that GW students lived in. But then gay people moved in and gentrified it, and they've even moved out already because they've been priced out of it. And now it's just a fancy commercial property and tourist. This is a kind of PLO cafe thing on the end, which amazingly is closed on Sunday night. It's a place that has great cheeseburgers, it's arrow boned. P Street toward Georgetown. And this is P Street towards DuPont Circle. Oh, you know what we're going to do? <laughs> it's so stalkery. We're going to walk by David Catania Street. He's my neighbor and I'm walking home. He's the independent candidate for mayor. I'm the libertarian candidate for mayor. And we are going to walk past his house. We're already at eight minutes, though. This could be a 15-minute tape just for me to get home. And we may be well past ten minutes before we get to David Catania's house. Up ahead is O Street. There is a bed and breakfast on O Street called the Mansion on O Street. Basically, somebody bought, like, three of these townhouses that you're seeing and put them together. I think they kind of did it without asking permission. They asked for forgiveness later, which from everyone I've ever read who's actually gone on record, who's opened a business or a restaurant, anything like that in DC, they basically say it would be impossible to actually start a business or hire anyone or get anything done if you actually obeyed regulations and permits and licenses. And what you have to do is just go ahead and either hope they don't notice or pay the fines later. Because if you actually comply with the regulatory structure the government's created, there would be no jobs or businesses here except for federal jobs and DC government jobs. Anyway, Mansion on the Street is right there. George Stephanopoulos, when he lived in DC, took his book winnings from his book about what it was like to be in the Clinton administration and bought one of these houses and lived in it. I think back when he bought it, it was under a million. Now they'd probably be closer to two. That's one of the forms of ill-gotten gains 
of the political class in D.C. is the really connected ones who are like only one in the inner circle next to a president can write a book. And then even if nobody reads it, they'll get all the government universities and government libraries to buy a copy. And they'll get unions and PACs to buy a copy and give it to their members. It's like a membership benefit. So they'll end up selling hundreds of thousands of copies of a book, even if almost no one ever reads it and no one cares about it. And then they will buy a one or two million dollar house with the money they get from writing a biography that no one reads. So this is Newport Place. This is the street where David Catania, who is the independent candidate for mayor, independent former Republican, lives. I think you know, she lives in one of these houses right here on the end that I'm focused on now. He doesn't live in the last one, but he lives near this end. I've actually known which one it is before, and you can drive in the back and figure it out from his car license plate, but I don't know exactly which one it is. It's a one block long, one way street. And I usually walk on O Street or P Street, sometimes N Street, but sometimes I walk here on Newport Place. Anyway, here comes a car, so I guess I'll the car with one headlight. Oh, well, clearly this is not David Katina's house since it has an Andy Schlau. <laughs> who is a kind of socialist, one of the socialist candidates in the Democratic Party primary. One is polling like 2% among Democrats, so he's not going to make it. This is a cute street. He was to be able to run a whole house here for like $1,000. And I think he used to be able to buy one of these like in maybe 96 or something. I don't know, for like $450,000. Now they'd be a million and a half or two. There are a few condos as well and a few apartments, but it's mainly single family row houses. a condo right ahead. It used to be an inexpensive condo here on 22nd Street that nobody was much interested in. But this area became more bourgeoisified. For some reason it used to be the case that DuPont Circle was considered nice, but this section, which is called West End, is this teeny sliver where there are a lot of hotels, a lot of one-way streets, and some apartment buildings. It was not considered nice. Uh, even though it's actually kind of closer to Georgetown, but it wasn't considered nice because Foggy Bottom was not considered nice. It was considered this ratty area where all these GW students lived. But all the old movie theaters and parking lots here got torn down. And they built the Ritz-Carlton condos and other things. And so then all at once, it was considered a fancy area. And it became at least as expensive as DuPont. Although when we get to this edge, all at once, the houses disappear. It becomes schools and magazines and hotels and post office buildings and places where they serve you lunch, but not, and maybe breakfast if you're working here, but they close up at night. Uh, so it soon becomes much less interesting. And I am actually within a block and a half of where I live, on a block that is in some ways much less interesting. So I think this tape is going to end soon. This is a rental building. And then after that, there are just a couple of condos that becomes all offices and schools.